Thank you so much for joining us on this live Tuesday edition. I'll keep almost saying Monday because of Memorial Day being yesterday. DanielEslin.com is his website. Daniel Eslin is with us for the balance of the hour via video Skype from Europe. And Daniel Eslin is a best-selling author in 64 countries with a true story of the Bilderberg Group, translated into 41 languages, including number one bestseller in Spain. And uh, he now has written the book that we sell, Trans Evolution, The Age of Human Deconstruction, uh, and how the paradigm changed for humanity that shall define its future and threaten its very existence. And he joins us to give us his latest intel from his sources, and again, it's in my film Endgame that came out in 2007, a full year and a half before the October 2008 crash. It has the clip of him in it, in the bar, where we would all get together with the reporters and share notes that his source, who I later learned who his source was separate from Daniel, one of his sources, um, in finance, I'll just leave it at that, but I'm just showing Daniel. I went and checked on his sources. We have some of our own sources as well. Tucker was a big one. He had some good sources, but those have dried up a little bit since his death last year, a few weeks before. Bilderberg's want to remember Jim Tucker, the original Bilderberg sleuth who read Westbrook Pegler's articles in the 50s when Jim was a big a sports writer and news writer nationwide. He was a big syndicated columnist, classic straw hat, whole nine yards. And he said, there's no way a secret political group's meeting. I would have heard about it. This would be big news. And then he began to sleuth it for decades when no one even knew the name of it. But then Estelin, because he's in the continent of Europe and went to a lot of these events where they got shot at in Portugal and other cases, was really able to get some amazing sources. And so he joins us to give us the true intel agenda that he's been able to ferret out this year. The, the official list and what they claim their agenda is, is now on their website, BilderbergMeetings.org. We have links to that up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. DrudgeReport.com is linked to that right in the middle column of Drudge. But we have a boil-down page that has both their official press release of what they say their agenda is and the official list at InfoWars.com. Uh, but Daniel Esselin of DanielEsselin.com uh, joins us. He's also the author of The Octopus Deception. Uh, Daniel, so much to cover. Where would you like to begin? Again, it's the Bilderberg time of the year again, and I'm very happy to see that you're well and healthy and still going strong. So, needless to say, thanks for the invitation. We can start, I guess, with the uh, um, with the uh, agenda items that uh, have come to me through my source, as you said, uh, um, about a week and a half ago. Now, uh, I wouldn't be uh, particularly trusty of uh, what the Bilderbergers say their agenda items are, because a lot of the times the actual agenda uh, list of discussion points and what has been published on our webpage is or is something watered down or complete fallacy, especially if dealing with some thorny issues as we are this year. So I can give you the uh, seven out of about nine or ten items they'll be discussing. Number one, uh, nuclear diplomacy, the coming the coming struggle over Iran nuclear uh, pact. This is one of the items. It's very interesting to say because um, Obama's or the elites or the oligarchies or Bilderberger's nightmare is um, Russia, uh, China, and Iran working together against the uh, the uh, the will-be powers of the world. The second item I have uh, from my sources is the consequences of Russia-China gas agreement on long-term cooperation. Needless to say, Bilderberg is going to be very, very, very angry at Obama. They're going to basically call him out and ask him what exactly he's planning to do. I mean, he uh, they've. Uh, Got the uh, uh, the the front door locked uh, with, uh, with the, allegedly with uh, um, with their uh, uh, I can't think of the word uh, um, <laughs> uh, NATO what, system the, what, what, exactly with their with a boycott of uh, of the Russian economy I just can't think of the word right now but what they forgot to do is the sanctions. Lock the Sanctions. That, that's right. That's right. What they forgot to do is actually get the back door locked. So the Russians and the Chinese gas agreement is needless to say something that especially the Europeans are very worried about. Number three is the German nationalism through a prism of European Union's political system. And that's a very, very interesting point because, again, we're dealing with the Europe's biggest uh, um, nation economically and uh, 
uh, the fact that you're dealing with nationalism itself. And again, uh, keep in mind that this list that I'm reading off right now came to me uh, about a week before the elections, European elections on Sunday, which showed how extreme left and right and basically nationalist parties across the continent have taken a very big chunk out of the traditional left-right divide Hegelian dialectic, as we say, uh, in the European Parliament. Then the fourth item is European Union's internet privacy regulations and what it means for the United States. Fifth is cyber war and peace. And again, we're seeing a lot of that, especially with the United States and China. Sixth point is from Ukraine to Syria, is Obama's foreign policy doomed? Again, Obama is going to be in the eye of the storm in this particular meeting. Needless to say, American presidents, sitting presidents, never attend builder meetings although two would-be uh, presidents or soon-to-be-elected presidents or presidential candidates have attended, as was the case with Bill Clinton back in 1991, who attended the Baden-Baden conference. And uh, he was introduced to the North American Free Trade Agreement for the first time at that meeting by David Rockefeller. And Rockefeller at the time asked him, uh, theoretically, if you were to be elected president, Mr. Clinton, would you support NAFTA? And uh, Clinton, who had no idea what NAFTA was, asked Rockefeller, it was important to him, and Rockefeller said, very important, and he said, of course I would, David. And so Rockefeller extended his hand and he said, thank you, Mr. President. Well, the rest is history, Alex, as you know, this is a story that I um, go in somewhat more detail in my book, The True Story of the Bilderberg Group. Then the uh, seventh item of nine or ten that I have is climate change, ethical and economic challenges ahead. Again, we go back to the same dead old horse, climate change, and again, it's just a uh, uh, a metaphor for reducing the world's economy, for deindustrialization, zero growth, um, and uh, we're seeing the effects of that on the world stage today. So neo-feudalism, uh, amazing. So going over these points again, and I want listeners to understand, Estelin really <coughs> does have Bilderberg sources. We've confirmed that. So this is so important what you're hearing that weeks ago, he's now revealing that here to us exclusively, we're very thankful, that Obviously, who they say is on the list, there's about 20, 30 people that sneak in, presidents, prime ministers, we're going to have our reporters there documenting that. What they claim their agenda is will be a few little speeches they give to get around the fact that this is illegal in most countries to be setting policy in secret, especially in England, but also in Denmark. And then they have their real meetings that break away. And this has come out in their minutes that have come out of the National Archives from the 67 and others. So we've been able to re reverse engineer a lot of this. But Estelin has multiple sources, one of which we're aware of, uh, that is able to get the internal minutes, I guess, from their steering committees, that they have meetings three times a year, at least, in Europe, England, and the U.S. One meeting in the U.S., one meeting in England, one meeting in Europe. It varies uh, sometimes, where you have the top people pretty much hammering out what the agenda is. Then it's sent to the second tier, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, to, to uh, have any changes parliamentary from what then goes on at the informal, pretty much voting uh, that goes on, but big. Uh, nuke proliferation, China, uh, Russia, how to use sanctions, how to block them, how to cut Russia's funding off, because they cut them off in Europe, making their money, they'll just do it with China, how does that happen? Uh, German nationalism, uh, the Le Pen movement, uh, UKIP spreading, uh, the, the, the real Tea Party movement here that the establishment's threatened by, web takeover, and laws that Europe may pass uh, restricting uh, illegal NSA surveillance, what will that do here? Uh, cyber war, I guess that's how they plan to attack, claim somebody else did it and use that as the excuse for the takeover of the web is their cover term, cyber war. Obama being doomed, how do they flush Obama because he can't get the agenda through? Uh, he was Bilderberg darling as we know. Uh, climate change or global taxes, neo-feudalism. Is that an accurate roundup of what you just said, sir? Yes, sir, very much so. Now, I, you know, as you were going through the list, I was kind of thinking uh, uh, to myself, what would people who are listening or who, who are not familiar with Bilderberg and who might be listening for the first or the second time uh, actually the existence of this group? Now, to most people who are not familiar with Bilderberg, this whole thing sounds crazy because, again, how do you convince people that a meeting that takes place once a year during three days or three and a half days actually has such tremendous effect on world policy? And this is something, if we have a minute, I'd like to explain so that people understand that this isn't some kind of a wacky conspiracy theory, that this thing is real, and there's a way that this thing works. Daniel, absolutely. We're going to come back. I will give you the floor in the next six-minute segment. Then an 18-minute segment's coming up another six-minute to really break this down. Folks, 
we're not bragging. This is major gravitas here. You're hearing what the most powerful group in the world, they don't run the world, they're trying to. They run probably half the world or more. You're hearing what's on their real agenda right now. There are major spy agencies that don't know this stuff. They're tuned in right now as well. This is hardcore info that you're getting from the highest levels. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carding to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. In the U.S., one in every 50 homes will have a break-in this year. Burglars call it smash and grab. Police call it robbery. We call it avoidable. We are Fake TV, a simple electronic device that can fool even professional burglars. Fake TV easily plugs into any outlet and simulates the changing colors of a television. To a burglar, it looks like someone must be home watching TV, so they'll likely move on to an easier target. At only $29.95, Fake TV costs less than a month of most alarm monitoring plans and comes with free shipping. Order your Fake TV by calling 877-5-FAKE-TV or go to faketv.com. That's 877-532-5388 or faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. This is Keisha Rogers, Democratic candidate for the U.S. Senate. Today is your chance to change the course of history by voting for me to kick the corrupt Obama regime out of the Democratic Party and pick up where our nation left off under a truly great president, John F. Kennedy. I'm running to break the control of Wall Street parasites over our government and over both parties by reinstating the Glass-Steagall Act. That means no more bailouts. The corrupt Democratic Party leadership doesn't want you to vote at all, as they're trying to sneak in a Wall Street millionaire who will easily lose to Wall Street Republicans like John Cornyn. This is your chance to break Texas free from that lose-lose situation. I have a program to revive the pro-growth scientific tradition of John F. Kennedy, exemplified by the space program and nuclear power. Vote today for me, Keisha Rogers, in the Democratic runoff for U.S. Senate. This is Keisha Rogers, and I authorize this message. Paid for by Keisha Rogers for U.S. Senate. Welcome back, my friends, to our continued coverage of Bilderberg 2014. The mainstream media they own and control is dying. They won't cover it, so we do at Infowars.com. We've got Paul Watson on the ground. Our other reporters get there tomorrow. Their flights were delayed. Uh, you've got the floor to break down how big a deal Bilderberg is. You know, just last week, one of the Bilderberg Group members, we covered it last hour with Paul Watson, Daniel, bragged 
that they indeed are the most powerful and are setting up a world government. So we've really forced them to try to hide it in plain view. Daniel Estelin. You know, no matter, Alex, where you look, governments, big business, and any other institution seeking to exercise power, the key to control is secrecy. You know, meetings such as uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, G8, or we should say G7, Russia is no longer a member, World Trade Organization, World Economic Forum, Central Banks, European Union Council of Ministers, European Commissioners, European Union Summits, uh, government cabinet meetings, numerous think tanks, foundations, you know, they're always conducted behind closed doors. And and the only possible reason for this is that they, you know, the, the, the powerful people don't want us to know what they're discussing. Now, and of course, beyond this common reluctance to actually reveal the proceedings of meetings, the secrecy principle extends to the forums and meetings themselves. By and large, we don't even know most of these meetings take place. You know, you mentioned Jim Tucker earlier. Well, he's been doing it, you know, God bless his soul, for uh, since the 19, early 1970s, I believe. And before that, it was... Uh, uh, the uh, um, uh, the the publication he was working for before I can't remember Spotlight. You know they were covering that. You know what I mean. And then I joined in 1995. And needless to say, when I found out that this organization called the Build or something or other, you know, back in 1992, when I heard it from someone who actually had something to do with it, I laughed in his face because I thought this is impossible. Well, needless to say, it is possible because again, by and large. We, the people, don't even know most of these meetings actually take place. You have the World Economic Forum in Davos in January, late January, February. You have the Bilderberg and G7 meetings April, May. You have the International Monetary Fund World Bank annual conferences in September. And then you have the Trilateral Commission meetings, you know, uh, three times a year. You know, one meeting in uh, January or February takes place for the Americas. Then you have April, May, uh, or March, April, you know, for Europe, and then September, October, you have uh, the Trilateral Commission. Asia takes place, then they have their annual meeting. Council on Foreign Relations, they have their, you know, uh, uh, quarterly seminars. It, you know, it, it's a kind of invisible international consensus emerges, and it carried over from one meeting to the next, but no one is really leading, and that's something that people have to understand. You know, um, Bilderberg is not some kind of a wacky conspiracy. We have these, you know, four old geezers sitting in a dark room, you know, under ground, holding hands, staring at a crystal ball, planning the world's domination, pressing buttons, and making the world go around. The world is a very complex place. No one is really leading this meeting. It works on the concept of consensus. And this consensus becomes the background, for example, uh, for the G8 or G7 economic communiques, it becomes what, you know, uh, it forms the International Monetary Fund when it imposes an adjustment program on countries in the third world. And it also becomes what the United States president proposes to Congress. And needless to say, it very much front and center for European elections, for the European key talking points, you know, for the agenda items, which then, you know, are passed on to national governments ac across Europe. And this is how it works. It's done through consensus. And again, you don't need to control every element of every corporation. You just need to control key levers of power, which is why the people who attend Bilderberg conferences are the movers and shakers of the world politics and economy. You have all the sitting presidents of European nations and Canada usually attend, as I said, sitting president of the United States never comes to these meetings, but he's well represented by his minions. You have, you know, key 50, 60 CEOs of the world's most powerful corporations from the Western world. Uh, you know, we're talking about uh, Amazon, we're talking about uh, corporations such as uh, uh, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Glaxo, Smith, Klein, Beecham, from, you know, every walk of life is IBM, needless to say, top corporate uh, leaders are there. You're talking about key members of the world press, New York Times, uh, Washington Post, The Economist, uh, CNN, uh, they're, they're all there, Le Monde from France, uh, a group of priests from Spain, you have uh, Financial Times is there, all of these individuals, they attend on the condition that what is said is not reported in the mainstream press because they're part of this juggernaut. So you have, you know, the key politicians, you have key ministers, key commissioners, you have the president of the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, uh, Federal Reserve Board, you have the, the chairman of the European Central Bank. So amongst these people, again, no one tells anybody what to do, but the consensus reached at these meetings go a long way in defining and deciding world policy. That's right. When we come back in the long segment, I want to break down some of the history of it and then what's going forward, how they try to plan to block nationalist movements that I know they see as the main threat with Daniel Esselin. And I'm going to add and augment uh, what you've just said that I totally agree with, that it's a consensus synergy.
where you're invited because you already agree on the global governance worldview to be run by autocrats and corporations. So we're going to talk about that on the other side. There's a consensus because all they're doing is fine tuning a program launched 100 years ago. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water for your preparedness storage or your home kitchen. Purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. This is Scottish John for Infowars.com. I know that most of you here in this commercial already know about the New World Order, eugenics, and all the other issues covered here at Infowars. The question is, do your friends and family know? If not, then I want to know why. Oh, I know it's tough to talk about this with some people. They might call you names, or they just want to talk about sports or soap operas. I say, so what? There's a battle going on out there right now. The ammunition is information, and the soldiers are you. It's time to transform your game from passive listening to active participant. We from Scotland have had our skin in this game for the greater part of the last thousand years and I'm still fighting. If we don't all stand up right now, we're going to lose everything. The Info War is worldwide. Tell your friends about Info Wars and let them know that Info Wars doesn't print bull. It's real journalism and news backed up by documented fact. Step up and take your friends and family to Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv and PlanetInfowars.com. The truth will set them free. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. stand up to us, then they all might stand up. Those puny little ants outnumber us a hundred to one. And if they ever figure that out, there goes our way of life. It's not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. The Alex Jones Show. Because there is a war on for your mind. Back in 2004, already 10 years ago, David Rockefeller wrote memoirs. And in it, he admits the whole plan for a private corporate planetary government. On page 244, we'll put the quote up on screen. He admits that there is a plan to create uh, a world government. He also praised when Mao Zedong died in the 70s, uh, how wonderful Mao Zedong was in communism. Some even believe we're part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. If that's the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it. The issue is they want to give us less for more. 
and they're exempt. The new world order means you can't have a car or air conditioning and they're going to suppress new technology that's clean. That's what Obama told Africans. These are horrible people that have a very anti-human mission and who openly say across the board that it's the end of humanity as we know it and it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to merge with machines and that's just the way it is. In fact, we sell the book that's already a bestseller, Daniel Eslin's new book that breaks all of this down, Trans Evolution, The Age of Human Deconstruction at InfoWarsStore.com. You should get it and support him and support us. And he uses, you know, basically their own admissions in here to break down the plan. And, and this is foregone conclusion in their writings. I talk a lot about eco-science written in 74 by the White House science czar, John P. Holdren, along with Paul R. Ehrlich. They talk about that in there, but now they're doing it. I mean, it's their world. They have steered Western genius to build the Internet, but to make it all a control grid. They have woven together all the different corporate systems to build the ultimate team to bring this in so that they and their progeny gained the golden fields where mortals become immortal of Elysium. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not quoting from the new movie Elysium. I'm quoting from what Elysium is in Greek culture and in Greek religion, ancient Greek religion. The globalists follow Plato. They believe that they are ascending. And I want you to talk about their real agenda, Daniel, and if you agree with what I just said, and is there any way to stop these people at this time? Because their agenda is behind schedule in some ways. Um, it's, a, it's a very uh, interesting point. Uh, I was listening to what you're saying, Alex. Uh, before the break, you talked about uh, you know, the whole idea of, of countries, nation states, as opposed to uh, you know, this pan-global dictatorship, which is basically what they're creating. Um, and they call it One World Company Limited corporations with a lot more power than any government on the planet. And this go back, goes back to 1968 to the Bilderberg meeting in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, where George Ball, Under Secretary for Economic Affairs, with JFK and Lyndon Johnson, talked about this as one of the key discussion points at that conference almost 45 years ago, more than 45 years ago. And today, that we're seeing the, uh, their plans for this uh, um, uh, pan-world uh, company limited, where corporations have a lot more power than, than sitting presidents or sitting prime ministers, is becoming reality. And it's, it's a scary thing if you actually realize that they proposed this as an objective 45 years ago. Now, the whole point of na national system, uh, nation states, as opposed to uh, the pan-world system, obviously has to do with uh, with the way they understand how money works. Now, the world today is run by monetary systems, not by national credit systems. And if you're smart, you don't want a monetary system to run the world. You want a sovereign nation state to have their own credit system, which is the system of their currency. Above all, it's the possibility of productive, non-inflationary credit created by the state, which is firmly stated in the United States Constitution. And needless to say, it was excluded by the Maastricht Treaty uh, um, uh, as a method of, of determining of economic and financial policy. Now, in Europe, this cannot be done because in Europe, governments are subject to control by private banking interests called independent banking systems. And these institutions have the power to regulate governments and to dictate terms to governments. And you think about you know this institution within the European edifice called the European Central Bank. Well, it tries to function like European independent central bank, which has no government. There's no government. There's no nation. It's a group of nations run by a private bank. And it's insanity to belong to this group, which is something that a lot of uh, people, millions of people, tens of millions of people across Europe are beginning to realize. It is insane to belong to the European Union. It is insane to belong to anything other than nation states. This supposed independence of the central bank is the decisive control mechanism for private financial interests, which historically in Europe have been installed as an authoritative instrument against an economic policy 
policy of sovereign governments uh, oriented towards the general welfare. And, you know, uh, European banking, it's a remnant of a feudal society in which private interests, as typified by the ancient Venetian cartels, you have talked about this before, Venetian black nobility, of the Lombard League, which went down on the Dark Age in the 14th century. And this is something that these people have tried to resuscitate so many times over. And again, they're destroying or trying to destroy every nation state in the world countries and create this pan-world economic order, which they want to call World Company Limited, at the expense of nation states, at the expense of independent uh, countries and peoples of nations. Daniel, obviously they didn't want this exposed. And, and there's famous quotes, we'll put one on screen, of David Rockefeller uh, thanking mainstream media at a trilateral commission meeting that's minutes were made public in 2004. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promise of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world. See, it's their plan. And we're not in it, folks. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto determination practice in past centuries. Trilateral Commission meeting address 1991. Again, it didn't come out till the mid 2000s. But the whole point is, these guys openly talk like this now. And, and my issue is, any elite that wants Common Core taught where two plus two equals five is a very evil elite. I mean, they want us dumbed down. They want us in a neo-feudalistic area. And people need to know this is the big threat. So let me ask you this. I want you to comment on what I just said, and if you agree or disagree. But you said in 2007, 2006, we put it in a film in 2007 that they would implode in, uh, in two years, uh, the housing market and all the rest of this, and that indeed happened. And you had that from your source. I mean, they want to hurt people. They want to make us poor. I think people need to realize that they, they, they want us poor to control us. It's neo-feudalism, correct? Absolutely, and you know one of the actually one of the things I was I was uh, uh, jotting down as uh, as we we're uh, in the last break is something else which I know they're going to be talking about. Although I don't have it as a as a um, as an item uh, discussion item on the agenda is you know the derivatives bubble. The global derivatives bubble today is twenty percent bigger than it was just before the last uh, financial economic crash, which we suffered in two thousand and eight. And it's important because, as you said, you know, the whole thing of deindustrialization, zero growth, uh, demand destruction, you need to destroy demand uh, if you want to reduce the world's population. Progress and development is directly proportional to population density. So if we have progress, we have technological development, we can have more people. You need to have progress and development, especially the technology to support, you know, the 7 billion people we have on the planet today. If you don't have that, there's going to come a point where you're going to have a collapse and a breakdown in the population. And a great example of this deindustrialization today is Detroit. You know, this is what, you know, this is their uh, poster child for the entire world. So the fact is that a derivatives bubble today is bigger than it has ever been before and it could explode at any point. I want to very quickly, if we have about a minute, to explain to people how this, you know, derivative bubble works and why it's being actually pushed by the elite to self-destruct. Yes, sir. Please break it down. We have an article up on Infowars.com today. Uh, by okay. Zero Hedge breaking down that it's it's reached an all-time mega high since 2008. You know, once you make the decision to create a bubble, any bubble, basically it becomes a pyramid scheme. So you're going to uh, really delink the financial games from the real economy, which you have to do if you're killing the real economy. But uh, you want to build up the speculative bubble, you have to you know, divorce it from reality and derivatives is a great way to do that. It's like creating a game casino table. And derivatives are side bets on the movements of various things like bonds, for example, the value of bonds, interest rates, currency rates. So uh, you speculate on these things and you can bet on how the speculation is going to go. So basically you pile derivatives on top of derivatives on top of derivatives. And a good example of that is, of course, the mortgage market, which everyone is, is, is now very familiar with, and, and which had mortgages, which were used you know, to back derivatives 
at least theoretically back them. But the notion value of derivatives, the dollar amount of the derivatives that were created were much more than the value of the mortgages. So you use the mortgages as a fuel to fuel these derivative machines, which then leveraged it. We don't know how many times over. And then uh, ultimately, this whole thing blew up completely. And, you know, this whole global system blew up, you know, blew out with it. And that was back in 2007. And as you said, we've talked about this uh, at uh, in, in Ottawa when you were uh, working on your documentary when we met at the Builder Conference in uh, in Canada, Ottawa in 2006. And needless to say, 2007, my words were prophetic. The whole thing just exploded. And needless to say, is going to explode again because the idea is to destroy the world economy on purpose. And the people who think that that can be the case because needless to say, if they do that, the elite will suffer as well. They will not suffer. They already control the entire planet. What they need to do is reduce the world's population. And the way to do that is to reduce wealth, real wealth, okay, real economy. And that's how you, you know, that's why you deindustrialize the economy. That's why you deindustrialize the world. That's where the terminology zero growth comes in. And if people are interested, you can Google the terminology zero growth, and you'll be surprised how often these words appear on the front pages of the world's leading periodicals. It's not there because somebody made a boo-boo. It's there because they want you to know subliminally that they're doing this on purpose. Well, that's right. And under Agenda 21 and so many other public statements under Cloward and Piven, you name it, they admit they want to make us poor so that only government controls through corporations uh, the jobs you can get. They call it privatization. It's really the, the, uh, the opposite. And then they can pick the winners and losers, and they are exempt from the regulations that they put on transportation, law enforcement, agriculture, uh, banking, manufacturing, construction, education, immigration, military. It's only a two-tiered system that allows all this to happen and that's why they promote racial division in all this and, and political correctness is they need to divide all of us while they're busy really being the ultimate discriminatory group. Absolutely, Alex. That's, you know, that's, it's, uh, you explain it very well in, uh, in Endgame, very, very well. It's if you if people haven't uh, if you haven't seen the film, make sure you uh, you get a hands-on copy of uh, of Alex's uh, film Endgame. It's an amazing film. I, I think it's like three hours long. Is it not Alex? Or something yes, like sir. That? It, it's 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 really about three films in one. We just call yeah, it Endgame. Films, it's, yeah, it's it's an amazing compendium of, of 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 you know of exactly how this whole thing is being put together by whom you have some amazing you know documentary images and footage. And uh, I don't know what you. Got some of the uh, photographs and uh, and film footage, but boy, I tell yeah, we you, got it from you, and, and you did a great well, job. There's some stuff there, which you know, I certainly didn't give you, but uh, oh, you know, some old yeah. footage from you know from the early part of the century, and uh, boy, an amazing film. You need to see it if you haven't seen it yet. Well, I tell you, Daniel, I don't know how you do it. Whenever we'll be there with a telephoto lens, and you'll go, "That's that's such and such, that's such and such," and then it always turns out to be accurate. Um, how important is it the people that that are going to be there who won't be on the list? Um, I, you know, I tell you that uh, since, uh, you know, uh, my, you know, Jim has done amazing work on, on, disc, on, uh, on uncovering, you know, uh, uh, Bilderberg uh, and their influence. Yeah, but, you know, since my book came out, The True Story of the Bilderberg Group, which, you know, you sold and, and thank you so much for promoting my book on your site and, you know, in, in, in your shows. But uh, it's gotten to the point right now where hiding, you know, the existence of Bilderberg has become silly. It doesn't make any sense, which is one of the reasons, you know, they, they you know, they, they decided, the Bilderbergs decided to actually put up their own web page. They say, you know, if somebody's going to talk about us, we might as well do it ourselves. You know, they control the information. And most of it is fairly accurate. And most of the people who attend, are, you know, are there. And occasionally someone might not be on the list. But I'll tell you about, you know. For the exception of one or two people, most of them are on the list of the attendees. What is important is to understand, again, that this is real, that the people who, who are there are important. Although, again, Bilderberg is, is not the you know, apex of any pyramid. You know, it's more of a conveyor belt. The real decision-making is done at even higher levels than Bilderberg or trilateral commission meetings, you know, Council of Foreign Relations. But it's an important element of the Sure, it's a major system. coordinating operation, as you said, conveyor belting all the groups. And, in fact, we've confirmed that some of the Bilderberg steering meetings will be held privately right after the official trilateral meeting. So as you said, they kind of nest together. I, th I think you use the term Russian dolls. 
Exactly. I mean, you're talking about Matryoshkas, obviously. You know, but the point is, you know, it's uh, uh, Bilderberg has, uh, they've, you know, they've always enjoyed, uh, you know, their secrecy or their privacy, you know. But uh, uh, it's gotten to the point where, you know, they, they can't hide any longer. But it's important to understand, again, a bit of a background that Bilderberg today is a bit less important than it was 40, 50 years ago, just because of the people who attend. Yeah, again, you cannot compare the initial original Bilderberg attendees from, you know, 1950s and 1960s. These are the people, you know, who were born before the, uh, you know, the, the end of the 19th century, who went for the First World War, you know, went through the Second World War. A lot of them were self-made, you know, men. And, you know, they built empires uh, out of nothing, such as you can talk about the Rockefellers, for example. And so these people, you know, they were steeped in, in you, know, you know, world politics at a level which today simply is just not feasible and uh but you know it was a very important element of the oligarchical structures of the cold war period and it was important because what it meant was that it was a vehicle Bilderberg meetings through which private financier oligarchical interests were able to impose their policies on what is nominally sovereign governments now what is interesting about the origins of Bilderberg is that uh, the biggest scandal part of it was that it was heavily, very heavily populated by people who come out of the World War II Nazi apparatus. That's right. Who were basically cleaned up and dusted off. You know, people such as uh, Prince Bernard, who was, you know, the face. And who had giant hidden troves of the robbed loot of Europe. I want to ask you about that, because I know you've written extensively about that, about all the art and the gold. I mean, just tens of trillions in today's dollars or euros. Final segment with Daniel Esselin. We've got several special reports that are going to be on the nightly news tonight. Looking back at Bilderberg, looking forward, new intel being broken right now at Infowars.com by Paul Watson and our reporters. We'll be right back. The official list is now on Infowars.com. Tired of taking handfuls of vitamin pills? Look and feel super with a great tasting lipid vitamin and mineral supplement called Passion for Life. This incredible one ounce daily drink can lead to better stamina and energy due to faster, more complete absorption. Passion for Life contains 135 all natural whole food ingredients. It's the best tasting, most powerful product of its kind on the market. Order now by calling 844 Try Life or find out much more about Passion for Life by visiting 844trylife.com. 844trylife.com. Harvest Right is the world's first in-home freeze dryer. Freeze dry your own fruits, vegetables, meats, and full meals. With Harvest Right, you can prepare foods that last 25 years, preserving its freshness, nutrition, color, and taste. All your food can be freeze dried. So don't throw away your leftovers. Freeze dry them with this incredible in-home money-saving freeze dryer. Go to HarvestRight.com to see how the Harvest Right freeze dryer works. That's HarvestRight.com. It's been said, those who control the food control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terragenics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. American gardeners and fellow patriots make the right choice with your money, time, and your family food supply. Choose 100% pure heirloom seeds in the Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com. Why spend more? The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com is only $37.95 and includes 20 varieties of pure, hardy, easy-to-grow heirloom seeds. Yes, only $37.95. That's 70% less than our competitors. You could buy three Survival Seed Vaults for less than one of theirs. The Survival Seed Vault from MyPatriotSupply.com includes detailed planting and seed saving instructions and ship same day plus all orders over $49 ship free mypatriotsupply.com is american owned by patriots like you passionate about freedom and preparedness call now 866-229-0927 that's 866-229-0927 or discover more emergency preparedness items when you order at mypatriotsupply.com choose the original choose the survival seed vault at mypatriotsupply.com
going to do five minutes of overdrive after Daniel leaves us here in about six minutes. And I'm just going to play a compilation. A video we'll also post on Infowars.com titled uh, Bilderberg Picked Obama or Bilderberg Made Obama. What did I say the headline should be? It was, it was, it was really good. Uh, how, how Bilderberg Made Obama. Something like that. Uh, it's five minutes long. It'll fit in the segment just perfectly. We'll have a bunch of stuff like this looking back in the years past and then forward with breaking stuff from Watson tonight, 7 o'clock Central, InfoWars Nightly News. Uh, please don't forget, this hour was brought to you by great sponsors with their non-GMO, super high-quality, storable food, mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. Best storable food out there, and it has a great price. And they're supporters of this transmission, a win-win-win, mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex or 866-229-0927, mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex. And please don't forget... Uh, that we have Esalen's excellent new book on transhumanism available at Infowars.com. Now, Daniel, before the break, I was asking you when you came back to break down. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I was asking to break down. I get so. Golden Lily. I think you mentioned Golden Lily operation, which went down the, uh, the you know, the gold uh, operation uh, in the Second World War by the Nazis. That's right, the missing Nazi loot and, and all the, the artwork and all the rest of it. That's right, uh, because you see a big Nazi contingent with Bilderberg. Please continue. Because again, you know, the, the two individuals, the key individuals who were members of the Bilderberg, uh, uh, right from the beginning, uh, Prince Bernard, one of the founders, SS carrying card member, and also Walter Heilstein, who's uh, the first president of the European Commission and the man, the lawyer, Nazi lawyer, who uh, whose uh, uh, writings uh, justified or convinced Hitler that he had the justification necessary to create the, the concentration camps. Uh, all across Europe. So these are the two individuals who are very, very much involved in Bilderberg from the very, very beginning. And that's something that Bilderberg has tried to hide. And if you look at some of the individuals uh, which you have uh, uh, today in the uh, key positions, such as uh, Herman van Rompuy, Barroso, Schultz, the, uh, uh, the outgoing uh, uh, president of commission, uh, these are the individuals who are very much uh, in the same vein as uh, as the early Walter Heilsteins and uh, Prince Bernard's. But uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, the, the whole point of, of a gold lily operation, very interesting. You know, we're talking about, if we believe the actual numbers, there's 140,000 metric tons of gold in the world, where there's, in fact, there's at least a million and a half metric tons of gold as a result of stolen loot by the Japanese and, uh, and uh, the Germans in the Second World War. Now, this information can, ever came out, that gold is as worthy as, uh, as a common rock you find on the street. The entire world's financial markets will collapse onto itself, and that's one of the reasons why most of this loot is still hidden in the... Uh, in the jungles of the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. And uh, actually, the whole point of this independent uh, uh, bank back in the second Bilderberg Conference in 1955, it was discussed at the time when Sukarno was the president of Indonesia, was actually going to use that stolen loot, which he knew where some of it was, as the backdrop uh, to create a non-aligned bank, which was actually going to be the key competition to the Western banks. And needless to say, the CIA took Sukarno out 10 years later in the mid-1960s, and one of the key reasons they eliminated him was specifically because of Bilderberg's concerns for what would happen to the world economy and how Europe and the United States would lose control of the world financial power if Sukarno actually got his non-aligned bank up and running, and he could easily have done it because he had wow. all the money as a result of all this stolen, you know, trillions and gazillions of trillions of dollars worth of gold stolen by the Japanese and the Germans. That's right. Second World War. Daniel, we're out of time. Will you promise to come back on in the aftermath of Bilderberg to track uh, what absolutely. happened? We'll have all the information from our sources. And uh, people can follow me at the, my Twitter account. It's at Estulin Daniel. And uh, please keep listening to Alex Jones. He's one of the few sources out there who really gets the information on Bilderberg more than anybody else. And your website's excellent. It's in Spanish as well. Give that out for folks. Yeah, it's DanielEstulin.com. My Twitter is Estulin Daniel. And, uh, you know, when we come back, maybe after the Bilderberg conference is over, we're almost done with my Bilderberg documentary. That's going to be out in about Can't months. wait, Daniel. You Thank you. Well, let's get you back on next week. Thank you. Visit GCMI. Can't wait to see that. We'll be right back today. with some overdrive and a special report.